enough. You're upset. You've lost a lot. But don't chuck away your dignity as well. You're finished here. Walk away. <laughs> Not while there's a breath in my body. That factory It's history. Is this is the present and the future, and I call the shots. All right, girls, show's over. You can knock off for the day. Sit! I said go. I said stay! I feel like I'm a cross. You lot are going nowhere till I've had some answers from you. Did you know you were working for him? Well, the thought had crossed my mind, Mrs C, but every time I asked him, he denied it. Ah. Huh? And the rest of you? Well, we didn't know what was going on. Just that we needed work. Well, as it was Mr Tilsley, we assumed... We assumed wrong. But now you know better, you can all go home and come back when your real employer's up and running, can't you? And how long's that going to take? I'm offering these girls a job right here, right now. They know which side their bread's buttered. Anyone not turning up tomorrow? What about you? I gave you a chance. And I'm grateful. I really like this job. I didn't want to lose it. But you'd rather knife me. There's nothing like loyalty. And this is nothing like it. Cuts both ways. These girls needed food on their tables. And you were halfway around the world. I stood by them now. They're standing by me. So don't you dare lecture my girls on loyalty. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. You have no idea what I went through. But I did not come out the other side to let a puffed up little ponce like you take away what's mine. Sorry. I need to take this. It's business. Close the door on your way out. I do feel bad. Me and all, I've let her down. She let us down. We don't owe her anything. Well, I can't afford to be fussy. So long as money's going into my bank account, I don't care who puts it there. Well, it's not over yet, I tell you. Carla, she's a fighter. Yeah, and you put yourself firmly in her corner. That were pretty obvious. Well, why wouldn't I? She's always been very fair with me. And will Tilsley be fair with you once he's seen her off? I think you should part your backside on that fence, mate. Sharpish. Here you go. Everyone's a winner, baby. Dilly, 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 dilly. Hot chocolate. Got a band. That was one of their, um. Never mind. Have you got any squirty cream? Only the stuff I shave with. My mum always puts squirty cream in hot chocolate. Oh, aye. Stick a flake in it and all, does she? Sometimes. Hmm. Tell you what, have a flick through my DVDs. We could put a film on while we're waiting. Cheer ourselves up. What's the Midnight Express about? A Turkish prison. It's a bit light on gags, that one, to be honest. But come on, chuck me some titles. The Deer Hunter. Schindler's List. Kess. I'm surprised I get up in the morning. You know what, we probably haven't got time to watch a film. Your man will be back in a minute. You reckon? They're going to sort it out, yeah? Listen, mate. Your mum loves you. More than anything. She'll make sure things turn out all right. Oi! Kids aren't allowed in here for moose. Oh, they're going to the post. We're not doing any harm. The law's the law. Out. It's my nephew. My own flesh and blood. Do you seriously expect me to wheel him outside and leave him to the mercy of the elements? I'll count to three. Oh, all right, all right. Look, I'll sort his rain cover out. Look, the, the race has just started, so they won't stay long. And if the priest do swoop, I'll vouch for your efforts to try and eject this little chap. I suppose it'll only be for a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, then you're out. I owe you one, Chief. Um, Deirdre, I need to nip out early for a few odds and sets of Simon's party. You'll be all right to work for, won't you? Yeah, fine. I'm not in tomorrow, though, remember? I want to lie in on my birthday. Birthday? Oh, so you'll be getting the key to the door, I assume? Oh, very funny. When I turned 21, they didn't call it a door, they called it a portcullis. <laughs> hey, listen, if you need any help with Simon's do, just say. Only you're looking a bit flustered. Oh, you know what it's like, right enough hours in the day. And I could do without Lord Snooty and his cracks. Oh, Lewis. <laughs> What's not to like? Oh, aye. Finish your shift, have you? I've squared it with Liz. I've got better fish to fry. Goujons of soul, to be precise. Goujons of soul? I think I went to one of their gigs with Lloyd once. 
With a bit of luck, they'll help me make sweet music with Michelle. I'm cooking for her tonight. Father says your fiddle stays in its case, mate. Sorry, I don't kiss and tell. Well, not tomorrow you won't, because trust me, she is hard work, mate. Well, in my experience, some men have to work that little bit harder than others. See ya. Right. Yeah, I think we can live without the chocolate fountain. <laughs> When it comes to fondue, I'm very much a fondant. It makes a very <laughs> striking centrepiece. Yeah, it's a magnet for troublemakers, more like. At my last wedding, the groom's uncle did something quite unspeakable in it under the cover of the first dance. Several strawberries were dipped before it came to light. Fortunately, I was on a diet at the time. Come along, Hayley. What's this room? This is the rocket suite for the more intimate celebration. Of course, the smaller square footage is reflected in the tariff. Oh, it's cheaper, you mean. <laughs> About half the price of the Mallard and, uh, yes, available on your date, I believe. <laughs> yes, and there's a reason for that. Intimate is sales speak for you couldn't swing a cat, but by the look of the decor, they've had a darn good try at it. Actually, it was refurbished last year. Oh, last year, yes. This is very last year. Well, I think it's rather nice, and... And is that a steam train? <gasps> oh, yes. The East Langsteen Railway isn't far. From this room, you have a wonderful view of all the locomotives on the hillside up there. Right, would love that. Why don't you have your reception in the signal box and have done? Be a sight bigger than this place. Just thought it'd be a nice touch. It's your wedding day, not a train spotter's outing. You can't let Roy's childish obsession take over. It is his day as well. No. Oh, no. You can get that idea right out of your mind. This is your moment in the sun, Hayley. Your time to shine. In the fairy tale dress, in the fairy tale ballroom. This is going to be the day you've dreamed about ever since you were a little. since you were small. All right, all right. Hello. Hey, it's me. You're way too early. I'm still in my flaming dressing gown. Hello? Sorry, I was just conjuring up that image. Well, you got to give me a chance to cook properly. You're worried about being in a dressing gown? I might be topless in a backstreet boozer. But our deal wasn't just topless, it was boxes only, remember? Now, you can't blame a bloke for trying. Look, let me up. I promise I'll stay out of your way and do me prep and let you get on with yours. Although, as far as I'm concerned, you could come just the way you are. I'm sure. All right, but you set one foot off the kitchen lino, and it'll be just you and Calvin behind that bar tomorrow, no matter how good your meal is. We won't take no for an answer. Yes. I mean, no. I was beginning to wonder what had happened to you. Well, you can't rush these things, Roy. We've had a very successful day, haven't we? Yes, yes, we saw a very nice place. <laughs> nice? <laughs> nice? It was sumptuous. I have to say, it put me in mind of Versailles. The palace? <laughs> well, I don't mean the treaty. <laughs> Tell him about the ballroom, Hayley. It, it was fairy tale. Fairy tale. And the grounds? Very nice. Uh... Look at her, Roy. Speechless. They were breathtaking. They'll be the perfect backdrop for the perfect day. Won't they? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Right. You still here? Yeah, get used to it. You'd be amazed how persistent I can be. Your time to waste. Mine, on the other hand. What, you think you can give me the brush off? Think again. What you've done is not only immoral, it's illegal, mate. What is? Finding my own premises? Paying the costs out my own pocket? Hiring staff who are happy to work for me? Hardly the great train robbery now, is it? That was Paul Stoltz in the farm, wasn't it? <laughs> Would you stream eavesdrop in now? No, I didn't need to. See, there's some of his order there. All boxed up and ready to go off to his depot. So what? It's my contact? Wrong. In the eyes of the law, he's an underworld contact. And you stole him. Doubt that would stand up in court. Oh, yeah, you've not met my solicitor, have you? You know, when she gets her teeth into you, she's gonna rip this whole joke of a company to pieces. 
Your sir at your death. Let's see. Give her a call. Use my phone if you like. Oh, no, I won't want to run up your bill. See, you're going to need every last penny you've got. Is it winning? No. no. Fifth out of six. I wouldn't mind if it was joint favourite. But it ran like it'd been smoking one. Um, listen, um, I've got to close up. Actually, you should thank me, uh, the way your luck's been running. Yeah, I know. Look, I don't have to uh, clock on at the casino for a while. You care to help me drown my sorrow? Oh, I'd love to. But I've, I've got to tidy up here. Actually, I was just going to put the kettle on. Do you fancy a brew? Oh, lovely, thanks. You know, um, this all brings back memories. Oh, you used to work in a bookies? Well, not exactly, but my... my father owned a small chain. You know, I used to love that world, behind the bead curtains, the pale, desperate faces, the fog of woodbine. The hard luck stories. <laughs> Well, they've banned smoking, but everything else is pretty much the same. Well, so I see. You know, it's not that different from my father's setup. I thought it'd be all computerised by now. No, no, Peter's a traditionalist, although he does stop short of a bead curtain. Anyway, I'll go and put the kettle on. Right. Hey, we could play a game. You got a console? Only me, Space Invaders table, and it's up the spout. I was thinking more of a parlour game or a guessing game. Like what? Um, how about I Spy? I Spy, I'm eight. All right, how about I Don't Spy? I Don't Spy? Yeah, you pick things that you can't see. But it could be anything. Exactly, that's the best bit. Me and Steve play it all the time. His last goal lasted for three months. What was the answer? Here's Rock. Or was it Doug Mountjoy? Can't remember now. Mum! <laughs> Steady, I've only been not gone a couple of hours. Yeah, it's a relief to see you. We both are. Now, did you clear up those Star Wars figures from our room? I'll do it. Now? Yeah. You've not known pain till you've stood on a Chewbacca at three in the morning. So, how did it go? You all right? Well, he didn't get physical, if that's what you're asking. So what did he have to say for himself? Everything I expected. He was full of apologies. They've not made the bruises disappear. He won't next time. Well, according to him, there won't be a next time. No, because if you got any sense, you'll stay well clear. Once a bloke hits a woman, it's a slippery slope. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't necessarily buy these one-size-fits-all theories. So what are you going to do? A lot of thinking. Try and work out what's best for us. And yourself. You can stay here, you know, as long as you want. The both of you. You're an angel. Did anybody ever tell you that? Not since I sent my wings to the dry cleaners. But I can't help but think we're taking advantage. I don't want to wear out my wings. Oh, don't be daft. All you've got to worry about is what to have with your chow mein. You expecting a power cut? Well, who needs candles? You light up the room. <laughs> oh, God. Are you trying to ruin my appetite before we've even started? Something smells good, though. I'll give you that. We're starting with the goujons of soul. Oh, the goujons of soul. I'm sure I supported them ones. Would you like to take a seat? Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> you certainly know how to treat a girl. I could get used to this. So could I. <laughs> we won't be disturbed tonight because Ryan's stopping at a mate's. Grand. I mean, good that he's independent, like. I must warn you, though. I've got quite an appetite. So how many courses have you got lined up for me? That's for me to know and you to find out. And upon arrival, your guests will be greeted with a glass of bubbly in the ground, weather permitting. Sounds lovely, doesn't it, Roy? I take it there will be a non-alcoholic alternative. Of course. The key is not to leave them waiting too long before the lineup. You don't want them overloading on the drinks. At one wedding I attended, they found the matron of honour face down in the ha-ha. 
And of course, you don't want your guests running to and from the loo during the speeches. Talking of which, excuse me. Oh, no. She certainly knows what she's talking about. Yeah, it's not her getting married. I don't follow. It, if, if you want a lavish affair, then, well, funds permitting, I, I won't stand in your way, so long as it's what you want. I'd hate to think that Mary's browbeating you. <laughs> no! I'm perfectly at liberty to disagree with his suggestions. <laughs> and have you? She's very persuasive. Well, you won't believe what I saw today. Your feet. <laughs> Sorry. Eddie Windass pushing a kid into his house. What, against the will? I don't know. No, in a buggy. Still. I mean, what's he doing with the child? It's a mystery. Oh, at the myth do we, at the myth do we. Not a fan of Toya, then? What do you mean he started a new business? Yeah, with my workers, with my contacts and the premises that you set up for him. Yeah, because I thought he was doing it for Underworld. He never said a dicky bird to me about setting up on his own. Oh, why would he? He took us both for mugs. I told her. I told her this would end in tears. It's cost you your business. It's brought George back into our lives. Do you know what? He had the cheek to send Si a birthday present. Really? Yeah. This great big transformer figure. I sent it back to him. I told him he could transform it into a flaming suppository. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carla. I really am. Oh, look, it's not your fault. What I can't work out is... I can't fathom how he's set up so quick. I mean, the sorts of regulations, how's he cut through them? He didn't. What? Look. I can't stand the bloke. He's always fancied himself too much and I didn't like him using Lee, so... He did not use me, Peter. Really? It looks like him. Oh, please have your domestic later. What do you know? Look, he needed all kinds of permissions and permits, so I got Deirdre to ring a mate up at the planning, right? Yeah. And they didn't turn him down because the slimy little toe rag never even applied for him. So as far as the council are concerned, that place, it's still a bar. Does George know this? Well, I only put him in touch. I don't know what they agreed. Might be worth finding out. I can have his number. Of course you can. It's the least I can do. Pass me back. Mm. Well, I must admit, the start was great. What's for me? Uh, baked haricot in a rich pomodoro sauce served on a bed of grilled giabatta avec bar. Mm. Well, I'll say this. I've never had it before. I wouldn't bet. <clears throat> Beans on toast. It's a classic. I thought I'd give myself the challenge of giving an old favourite a new twist. What, was in the oven? Nothing. I thought I'd do that to put you off the scent. Yeah, scent's the word. Why does my flat smell like a chicken dinner? Well, I thought that when I arrived, but I didn't want to say. I thought it was your deodorant. No, don't! <sighs> How did that get there? <laughs> well, I doubt it flew. <laughs> You call yourself a chef, you can't even roast a chicken. In any normal oven, but what's the crack with those knobs? I mean, I've got a city in Gales and Cater, another PhD in hieroglyphics. Mm, now, what is it they say about bad workmen? Mm. <laughs> got a lovely car from Lynn this morning. What's she after? Nothing. Yeah, but you don't want to play pen pals with your old cellmates, do you? You want to cut them dead? I wish I had. Hiya. Come in. Wondered if you fancied going to Rovers. Well, it's a tempting offer, darling, you know, but blood's thicker than water. Oh, shut up. I'll finish this. I could do with a drink after today. No rush. I need to put my face on. <laughs> just borrow one of his. I'm warning you. I'm not in the mood. You know where the bathroom is. Just nip up when you're ready. Cheers. Actually, we might have something to drink to. Oh, no. I don't hear the patter of time. No. I rang Dev earlier. He's happy for us to view his flat as soon as. You're moving out. If you need help packing, you know, just say the word. Do you think I've got time for viewings to even think about it? Um, I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, really? Take a good look at this face. So you'll let us know when flat warming is, won't you? Serve with fish, game and poultry. Mm. No mention of beans on toast, though. Funny, that. Well, you actually think you complimented the meal quite well. And like yourself? Mm. No, no. As beans on toast goes, that one was right up there. Can't wait to taste your boiled eggs. Could be arranged. How are you fixed for breakfast? <laughs> I'd say it's a while since you had it in bed. 
Yeah, but I think it's overrated. Gets the sheets mucky for one thing. No, you know what they say. You can't make an omelet. Yeah, and on tonight's performance, you probably can't. But it was fun. Thank you. You don't know what you're missing. I make a mean breakfast. Yeah, well, so does Roy Cropper, but he won't be stopping the night either. Now, if I were you, I'd go home, run an iron over my favourite pair of pants. Night. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought your mum knew I would never have... Oh, don't worry about it. Look, I've had a tough day. All I want now is a quiet... Evening. Oh, I was just going to pay you a visit. Not a social call, though, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, you have to make an appointment in business hours. Excuse me. Oh, no, you see, tomorrow, I've got a feeling you'll be tied up with lots and lots of lovely red tape. What? I know you've not got planning permission, Sunshine. And, um, if you've ignored the council, I'm betting you've ignored a whole lot of other important people, too. Don't worry. It's nothing I can't sort. Oh, no, you see, your landlord didn't seem so confident. You were in the right state once I'd filled him in. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure who's going to close you down first, him or the council. Either way, you're going to be out of business by tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your drink, love. And Coronation Street is back in half an hour.